So uh, yeah, congratulations for for uh, what you've done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, congratulations, and and I'm requesting prayer from everyone because Nisha Berry is still not entirely 100% happy with the chain of events. She she's happy, but uh, we had literally talked the day before about uh, me going to see a urologist and having a minor procedure done uh, just to prevent such things from happening and literally within 48 hours god laughed and here we are well uh, you know it really is a wonderful wonderful thing i think there's no better parents for the species than the two of you so <laughs> if, if anything else you're contributing positively to uh, to humankind and um that's that's, really a, that's a high honor and compliment thank you for that no, it, it really is. And I think, you know, as I uh, looked at my notes for this uh, discussion, I, I write down some thoughts about things that we can uh, talk about. And really, the way I look at these types of discussions, it's more about almost somebody having, uh, our audience having a voyeuristic experience, kind of looking over the fence and seeing how you and I talk about stuff. We, there are certain things that in our community are given. So now we can really look at the rock face. We don't have to convince anybody else that LDL is okay, that keto is okay. It really is about the nuts and bolts and presenting new information, new ideas and kicking those around and for people to understand how we work on the fly and how we think. Um, so, uh, you know, I wrote down a few notes and there are a couple of things that I'd like to go through. The other thing that I do, and, and um, I don't know if, if people understand this or not, but there are very, I don't have a lot of time to watch a lot of people's videos. But Ken Berry is always on my list. Oh. And um, I, I, I like to make little notes. Some of the quotes you'll see on my Instagram feed are modifications of what you've said out there. And, and we'll, I'll throw a few of those out. So one of the starting things, seeing that it, uh, for those that don't know, Nisha Berry, Ken's wife, is pregnant again. And um, what's interesting is uh, you made a, a wonderful comment just a little bit ago in a live, I think it was a Q&A session that I watched. Um, and that was about fertility. And you said something pretty incredibly uh, it's going to appear on my youtube channel but um not youtube on my instagram as a quote but the quote goes this way uh let's see i write them down because my brain is small um where is it here um if you're too fat or too skinny your body is not primed for fertility and you are less likely to get pregnant pcos which is an infertility protection or worse still, gestational diabetes, which is something that happens to both mother and fetus. And a keto low-carb diet or way of life is the healthiest framework for a healthy pregnancy. And that was very impactful. Obviously, I work in the space, but uh, that's a morph of a quote that you put out there. And it was just so impressive to hear that. And I know that Nisha is probably pretty public about the fact that she had uh, or has in the background a history of Hashimoto's, which is associated to a certain <clears throat> with infertility. How has that evolved and how have, how have things fallen into, into place this time? Well, as you know, Hashimoto's can have a, a significant negative impact on uh, fertility and the ability to conceive. And indeed, the, our, our first baby, who's now two, Beckett, uh, we had to go, we went through two rounds of IUI and did not succeed and then went through one round of IVF and did succeed. So even though she had been eating much closer to what I call a proper human diet, uh, her Hashimoto's was still having an impact on her ability to be fertile. And uh, since Beckett has been born, I mean, we just, we just eat lots of meat and eggs. And she has some veg sometimes, sometimes she doesn't. And, you know, we, we live on the farm, we're outside constantly, we're in the sun constantly, uh, we're in nature constantly, and we're, we're eating as, as, you know, nature provided for hundreds of thousands of years. And, and I, you can't convince me that that didn't have a significant effect on her fertility. Uh, she had, we had tried for years to conceive. And we, we weren't trying this time, literally weren't trying and we're actively planning to not conceive. And uh, so, yeah, I, I think that uh, more and more, I mean, there's obviously there's reams of, of, of data and research showing that the more metabolically healthy you are, the, the higher your rate of fertility. And that makes perfect evolutionary sense as well. 
uh, ancestrally speaking, if if we were going through a severe famine, and you know a woman was carrying five percent body fat, that was a that was a hard no signal to her her the mechanism of her fertility. No, this is not the time. You do not need to conceive. And only in modern times have we seen that actually body fat percentage can go too far in the other direction. And with all the hormonal abnormalities that brings, that also is a hard no for fertility and conception. And so there is a sweet spot for women that seems to be somewhere between a body fat of 15 and 25 percent where women are the most fertile. And there are many experts out there who argue that the, the body condition where you're the most fertile is probably also the body condition where you're most healthy. And I think I think that's hard to argue with. Yeah, and I, I agree with you. And it's it's also not only healthy to get pregnant, but to have to give that fetus the best start of life because most <clears throat> of the evolution of a fetus happens in the first four to six weeks. I mean, the heart is beating by six weeks. The brain starts to form. Most women don't even know that they're pregnant at that stage. And if they've not been giving the baby the right building blocks, to develop those cells and they're rapidly dividing. I mean, you're dividing once or twice a day, those cells are doubling in volume. So it's so important to be eating right before you get pregnant. But I, I think if I can just circle back for a second, Ken, you said something very important about your own short life story here with, with regards to Beckett. Um, Nisha had a problem that resulted in a decrease in fertility uh, ability. And it wasn't like you, you went keto for two weeks and suddenly you got pregnant. I have, uh, I'm a clinical, clinically practicing doctor. I have a large number of fertility doctors that send their PCOS and other patients to me. And with the expectation that in a few weeks, some little diet is magically going to make everything better. And I think your story is a testament to that. You went through IUI, you went through IVF. And even with assistance, there were a couple of failures before you eventually became pregnant, despite probably having eaten correctly for quite a long time. And now, yeah. two years later, now you didn't social or initially didn't socially distance from sperm. The sperm found a little twig and pole vaulted in. Um, so, you know, that's the problem is that uh, uh, the sperm will find you when you're, fit, when you're very fertile. But it took two or three years at minimum to get to that point. And I think in this hurry up and do it society where fertility doctors are expected to act right away and to make it happen right away. I, I think that patience is very important in, in terms of one or two, three years of consistently eating correctly. Uh, I know there's a time pressure. A lot of our women are older. They want, they're in their forties. They want to conceive. Uh, mm -hmm. and they, the time pressure is there. It's also time is money. They're paying a lot of money for these things. But if you're patient, not only are you more likely to get pregnant, you're also more likely to have healthy embryos and healthy fetuses to begin with. So um, while it, it is an astronomical increase in fertility rate that we've seen, be patient. People come in for two or three visits, they, have, they implant, they have a failure, and then it's, oh my God, this is, doesn't work. And I think patience is so important, patience and consistency. And you, your life is a testament of that as she goes through this pregnancy. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, as you know, doctor, there's a there's a, a normal distribution curve of every human physiological thing, every lab value, every uh, behavior, every action of the human body. There's a normal distribution curve. And I think some women heal very quickly when they begin eating a proper human diet. Other women, it takes weeks, other women months, some women years to completely reverse the metabolic damage that was done from decades of a suboptimal diet. And I'm, I'm being charitable when I call it suboptimal, right? And I'll tell you a, a funny story that happened to me uh, quite a few years ago when I was first starting to recommend keto as a temporary weight loss, well, loss hack. I had no idea. This was probably 10, 11 years ago, maybe 12. Uh, I would recommend keto to any of my obese or morbidly obese patients as a, you know, like, because they had all seen my weight loss transformation and they're like, doc, what'd you do? And I'm like, well, if you want to know, I'll tell you, this is what I did. And so I had two women who were, who were uh, years long patients of mine. Uh, one was 48. And one was 51 years of age. Wow. They were both quite perimenopausal. They were already starting to have uh, menstrual cycle irregularities. 
or uh, I used to call it dipping their toe in the menopausal river, right? They were getting ready to jump in, but they weren't in yet. But they were already having the, the early signs and symptoms of being in menopause. They both started eating a very low carbohydrate uh, ketogenic diet full of meat and eggs and plus some veg. And when they came, both of them, when they came back, it wasn't on the same day. It just, it just was a funny coincidence. They came back for their three-month checkup. They both lost a substantial amount of weight. And one of them was very happy to, with me to the point of tears because she was pregnant. Wow. And they had, been, they had been hoping and praying, but they thought she was just, you know, she was too old. It was too late. And she was pregnant. And she was over the moon with, with happiness. The other lady, on the other hand, had no intentions of having any other children and was very unhappy with me. And they both knew intuitively that the diet had caused this. They just, and of course they didn't know, but they felt, felt it. Their women's intuition told them this diet had something to do with me getting pregnant. And uh, it was the the 51 year old was just elated. The 48 year old was furious with me and let me know that uh, in, in no uncertain terms. And uh, she got over that. She's very happy now. They both have beautiful children and we're both, we're all friends still. But, uh, it, but, and so my point is some p- women, it doesn't take long. And so I tell women when they're about to adopt a ketogenic, a ketovore or a carnivore diet, if you haven't got your birth control sorted, you better because there is no diet on the planet that is going to make you healthier and therefore more fertile than eating a proper human diet. You know, Ken, what you say there is so true because the commonest complication in my practice whether it's with surgery or without surgery on a ketogenic diet, we have a 12% incidence of this complication, which is unplanned pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So I always, 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 when people are starting to get into this, the fertile Mm -hmm. women, um, I will have the protection discussion because, and and, they blow me off. I haven't had a period in a long time. I'm infertile, I've got PCO. And if we don't pay homage to the protection discussion, then three or four months later, we're going to have to have the bump discussion. Yeah. And I've had a lot of bump discussions in my day. Yeah. And, and that's what yeah, you're, a woman's reproductive uh, machinery could, could not care less about your opinion or your desires or your wants. If the, if the situation is right and the environment is, is healthy and right, uh, you're going to get knocked up if, if all the, of the variables are in place. And I, I think that's, that, that's why we aren't extinct as a species is because we're very good at reproducing if, if our diet and environment is proper. And uh, I, I, I think that's just, it's, it's the most beautiful and the most elegant system. Well, the, way it works. the flip side of this is this, is that there is a potential threat to our reproductive capacity because of what I call an industrial diet or the standard American diet, uh, it does for the things we've just talked about threaten that. 